Hello and welcome to What's Your Baseline? Shorts. We're taking a look today at one of the topics with the most contention in terms of modeling notation in Roland in my life. So first and foremost, my name is J.M. Erlinson. I'm an architecture and business process expert and excited to talk to you about how we look at process notations. And Roland? Yeah, I'm Roland Volt, and I was the guy who had the idea for these shenanigans here. And otherwise, read up your bio. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, this, this What's Your Baseline Shorts is unscripted. But, uh, but it's exciting to take on some of these topics in a shorter format so you can understand how we bring these all together. And this one is all about talking about BPMN and EPC. Um, now, first and foremost, Roland, what, what do you think about BPMN and EPC? What, what, what are they and why are they different? And how do they re re like relate to the way people do their process modeling and process uh, an architecture? So that would be a very short session. PPMN one, <laughs> end of story. <laughs> oh wow! And actually, I, I I don't think it should be quite that short. I think there's a lot more to discuss about it. But first and foremost, tell us about BPMN and EPC. Well, tell us about the well, yeah, they're both they're both process notations, right? So process notations literally to, to be able to uh, show from the beginning of a process through certain steps to the end of the process and who's doing it and which apps are used and all these type of things. So mm -hmm. they both capture the same information. They do it just uh, in a different way. They represented it in a different way. And when you think about it, EPC, which, by the way, stands for Event Driven Process Chain, was invented yeah. in, in the um, late 80s, early 90s as part of the whole ARIS method by Dr. Scheer in Germany and uh, became the de facto standard in the 90s and the 2000s for SAP implementations. So you see things, the same things that you see in BPMN, right? So you see events, you see uh, tasks, you see roles, you see apps, risks, and all that type of stuff. Um, there's some certain semantic coming with it. And EPCs can have uh, swim lanes or no swim lanes and, and basically show the content. But Jam, what is BPMN? Well, that's a great question. BPMN stands for Business Process Model and Notation. Um, and BPMN is a, a sort of rigorous guideline for how to document swim lanes, primarily swim lanes, um, your business process flow. So once again, the same same sort of symbology you'd see, but it's maintained by a, a larger group uh, that, that sort of governs a lot of things. It, the, that group, I believe, also does something around DMN. They at least tried to get the decision model and notation mm -hmm. yeah. standard. That's, that's the OMG, correct? Yeah, that's it's the object I'm, management uh, group. That's the, object that's management the name group. of that organization. But So it's a sort of an independent. They're not attached to any given platform. I think EPC is much more uh, synonymous with the ARIS platform or with SAP, mm -hmm. um, although there are other platforms that certainly use um, EPC as, as how they do their modeling. And BPMN uh, has a few different standards. It's come through a couple different evolutions from uh, the, the old BPMN 1 spec that had sort of different types of diagrams that you could go into and uh, very just basic shapes that you would work with that, that indicated the pro programmatic logic of how a process should work to what now sort of the BPMN 2.0 to uh, X standard, um, really 2.0, um, which is all about bringing this, uh, this bunch of different types of sub symbols so you can be more specific about the type of task you're doing and mostly talking about process collaboration diagrams. There are things, other types of BPMN models. We mostly deal with process so, and collaboration. Yeah, let, let me stop here. So, so that's a good point, JM. So BPMN does not have only one model type. BPMN yeah, no, actually much. has four model types, right? And so the, the spec is, is much wider and it should show things on different levels. You know, the collaboration shows the, what about 30,000 foot or 10,000 foot view, how participants yeah. interact with each other versus the uh, BPMN collaboration diagram actually shows that on a who does what, when, where level. And I think the biggest difference is the intention uh, for both yeah. notations, you know, for EPC, that's embedded in a bigger um, framework, if you will, you know, where you have value chain diagrams and you can jump to org charts and all these type of things. Mm -hmm. While in BPMN, the main purpose is supporting automation of processes. So right. what, and, and yeah, interchange language dot BPMN is a perfect example of that. Like they standardize on a on a way of importing and exporting for, from tools that can are compliant to the BPMN 2.0 spec to create dot BPMN files that other tools that are compliant to that spec can import. That could be including like business rules engines or like some RPA tools work with that. Some, you know, some uh, larger process mining like can process mining, those yep. sorts of things. So they, they really designed it. But once again, it is programmatic. And this is where 
I think I want to turn the conversation a little bit because I think, Roland, you and I are on different sides here. I mean, I think the, you started the conversation by saying BPMN won. <laughs> and uh, that's, in some ways, I think that you, you're right about uh, some of the market penetration things, but I don't think it won in a lot of spaces that I play in. And I don't think it will, it should win for a lot of reasons. Um, and first and foremost is that BPM asks a different question than EPC by its very nature. In fact, every sort of swimlane modeling methodology asks a different question based off of its very nature, right? Hold on. You can draw a BPMN diagram without swim lanes. And you have it's a still true. legal BPMN diagram. It's true, but most people that I work with think of BPMN as swim lane models. In fact, often yeah. they don't even say BPMN. Yeah. They're just draw, drawing things in, in BPMN format because whatever tool they're using requires that. But generally, when we're looking at BPMN, people are often thinking, maybe, maybe it's not all in all cases, but people are often thinking, who does this? What mm -hmm. does this first? Mm -hmm. And that conversation is what I call actor focused. They're thinking oh, first and foremost, who does it? And then answering the question, what do they do? Whereas when you look at EPC, top down or side, or side on or whatever, they, they have this idea of satellites. The idea is that a task around that task is splayed all of the contextual information that should inform what that task does, including people. So, so that it's, means a, it's a function focus instead of an actor focus. So that means it's more cluttered and harder to read? In some cases, absolutely. Um, but but if you think about it, BPMN, a lot of that information is either A, lost, because the BPMN 2.0 spec does not include uh, risk. It does not include capability. It does not. It does, I don't think it includes anything to do with uh, customer journeys. It, it doesn't, include, no. Not it, at no, all. It, it's missing a lot of the information. So where we feel, find, I've seen a lot of people doing is they put that information in like textual attributes on the BPMN object itself. That stuff goes goes there to die. It's incredibly hard to maintain or, text attributes. Or your tool allows you to create relationships to other objects that exist somewhere else, which is, I think, yes. the more elegant way. I, I well, think they extend the BPMN spec. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think the the biggest difference between those two is not so much is it actor driven, is it is it uh, process driven or step driven. I think the biggest difference is BPMN to me has a little bit of that geeky and technical flair to it you know it yeah. has it has a boatload of different symbols um for example when you look at events you know who knows what a uh, non-interrupting event driven <laughs> intermediate <laughs> event is right yeah, yeah, yeah so so it's it's super geeky and the first thing when i do implementations is basically talk to the client and say hey can we simplify this you know what do you yeah. really need right and then there's some some room for improvement, if you will, in the spec itself. You know, there's some conflicting sure. or, or not well-defined things in there that you see. So to give you an example, um, when you have a task that does not have yep. a little sub-symbol that classifies it as a manual task or uh, an automated task, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's a generic thing. But when you go to gateways, right, so yeah. the object that routes uh, process flows, not make the decision that routes it because the decision was made in the step before. Yeah, the, the logical routing, yeah. The empty gateway means XOR, while the spec also has an XOR symbol. So yeah. it's it's inconsistent and illogical there. But these are all the quirks that that you see there. No, and I, I agree that it, it is a more geeky language in, in a lot of ways. And, and in, in being geekier, I think it gives you a huge advantage and a huge disadvantage. Mm -hmm. The advantage is that people who are thinking programmatic logic, who come from that background, they understand it like instantly. They go, okay, I see what this is doing. I, I can follow this. And I'm using systems that will understand and accept this the same way I do. They, yeah. I've built this ecosystem around myself and it's perfect. That's but it, it's hard for your, your senior stakeholders. Yeah. Right. They're not going to understand this as well because you can't communicate that. So I see people redoing BPMNs often in PowerPoint. And just turning it into something simple so they can talk to a senior leader, that's like double work for every single word. Did you, did you notice how I just shrunk by an inch or so when you said that? <laughs> <laughs> that's horrible. But yes, I agree. I agree. So so simplification is the key. I think that's one takeaway when, when working with BPMN. The other one is, which is where I actually have a beef with, is BPMN, because it has that automation flavor, does not know hierarchies. So it has an object mm. in there that's called subprocess, and people say, "Oh, yeah, it's the sub sub process, you know, a level below, and I can drill down seven levels below, uh, seven levels below." And and the answer is no, you don't. 
subprocesses as objects are meant to expand and contract, right? So that yeah. you have that you have uh, a better readability of your models, right? To say, okay, I can capture this type of content, put a box around it, and just show the box named subprocess. Uh, it's not, mm -hmm. for what it's worth, it's also not reusable content, which is something that people who use a tool like Ares sometimes forget. For that, BPMN has a different symbol called collectivity, which in all series I've never seen used in a real-life process. No. But anyways, so that's my, my biggest beef. And, of course, you mentioned it. Uh, it's not meant for strategy modeling. It's not meant for org modeling and all those things. And, and I typically point uh, clients to Chapter 7 of the spec, Oh, is that scary that I read it so often that I know where to find it? Ooh. Where on one page it describes what it's for and what it's not for. But maybe to bring this to a closure, I'm still a fan of BPMN, not because everybody and their grandmother uses it. I'm a fan of it because it's an independent standard. Standards mm -hmm. are good. If you wouldn't have standards, you could not plug in your laptop in an outlet. Right. That's you true. could not have an adapter if you travel overseas and plug it in those outlets in there. So standards are good. And I think that is the, the big key for me. The second big key for me is what you mentioned before. It's not just a notation, a pretty picture in a diagram. It's also a file format. And yeah. if it's standardized, and unfortunately the reality is it isn't, right? Or no, let me rephrase that. It's standardized, but the implementation in different tools is not yes. consistent. Um, if that comes to a little bit more maturity, well, then you can do those things like automation, process mining, all those wonderful things that I think everybody yeah. wants. And I think this is this is where we want to be, right? You don't want to be tied to your tool. You want to be tied to your content. You want to take that content and be able to transform it into something that you can use elsewhere. And I think that's yeah. the main reason why I'm a big fan of, of BPMN. And I think that well, that's a great you know, note to leave this, this episode on. We like both these standards. I think that we both agree that EPC has the capacity to tell a better story and a more comprehensive story. But the truth of the matter is more tools speak BPMN. And with an independent standard maintained by, I, I mean, I, I could say debatably a, uh, a resilient group. It's, the OMG has been around for a long time. They, mm -hmm. they, they, they show no signs of slowing down. And, I, and, I have no reason to believe they won't continue to maintain this. And the major tool vendors are, are part of that. You know, you see the IBMs yeah. in there, you see the Megas in there, you see the soft AGs in there. So yeah. it's, it's all a consortium of the different firms and everybody has their stake in there with a little twist in there. But I think that that's a good thing. Yeah. So tell your story, however it makes most sense. But from our perspective, BPMN is more transportable. EPC is a better storyteller. Now it's up to you. And so we leave, we leave you on this point for this What's Your Baseline Shorts. Well, I, any last thoughts, Roland, before oh, yeah. we go to uh, a very, the, very the last, A very last thought is uh, I wrote two articles about the comparison about EPC in BPMN. Did you? Back in 2011. <laughs> so take it with a grain of salt. You obviously find that on our website, whatsyourbaseline.com. Uh, and I will put some links in the show notes somewhere here. And that's a that's a great pitch for whatsyourbaseline.com. Remember, folks, that's that's got all the information about this episode, all of our other episodes from the podcast. And, of course, you can always leave us feedback there because these What's Your Baseline shorts are meant to answer the hot questions you got burning in your heart. So if you can answer those uh, for us you know, and give us some topics you'd like us to talk about, we guarantee you we'll take a look at them and maybe even show them on one of our future shorts. Well then, JM. Well then, Roland. It's I, I'm JM. I'm Roland, and I'll see we'll you in the see next you one. In the next one. <laughs>